Coming up next, thousands of minks are on the loose in central PA. Find out why it's now a criminal investigation. Plus, school districts forced to make changes because of a serious shortage of bus drivers. We are in a very serious situation. We really could use some bus drivers um, immediately. And the community rallies around a shop to save it from possible eviction. I was like, oh my gosh, am I gonna lose my job? The Center County Report starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Tim Rogers. And I'm Angelica Rubin. Thanks for joining us for the Center County Report. Our top story, a local school district is sounding the alarm about a serious shortage of school bus drivers. It's part of a trend seen across Pennsylvania and the nation. Olivia Jean is in our studio with more. Angelica, this is a problem happening in many places ever since the pandemic. Bus drivers left and many never came back. So despite offering higher pay and more aggressive advertising, districts, including State College, are still short and it's forcing changes. We are in a very serious situation. We really could use some bus drivers um, immediately. State College area school district is struggling to get students to school. They tell us this year has been the worst. We have been really um, uh, not been able to replace people as they have been leaving and that's what's been causing our problem. The decrease in bus drivers has meant longer travel times for both students and drivers. In some cases, the shortage has caused students to arrive to school early so that their bus driver can pick up another set of kids. In other cases, students have been arriving to school late but are still excused. The district has been forced to eliminate five bus routes already. If things don't improve, it may have to change routes or expand how far students need to live to take the bus. The job is hard. Um, it's driving a large vehicle, managing students. Bus driver Michael Fullington says it's tough work, but he loves his job. I like my kids, you know, and that's, I think that's the reason why most school bus drivers drive school buses because they like their kids. I have. Uh, bought them Christmas presents and and uh, I've taken them to dinner and breakfast. Fullington Tours, Michael's bus company, is one of the contractors in the district. Even though he owns the company, he's been forced to jump on board and drive buses himself during the crisis. Now I'm needed to be a school bus driver, so I drive school bus every day. We've had to double up on a lot of our runs. And it's not just State College. All 50 states have faced bus driver shortages this year. In the Harrisburg area, one district even moved to remote learning because of the driver shortage. If you think you might be interested in becoming a school bus driver, you can apply online with the district or contact the District Human Resources Office at hr at scasd.org. You can also contact Fullington to apply. Thanks, Olivia. Thousands of minks are on the loose in central Pennsylvania this afternoon after getting out of a farm in Northumberland County. State police say someone cut holes in the fence at a farm nearby Sunbury, releasing 6,000 to 8,000 of the furry animals that look like these. The Sunbury Animal Hospital posted on Facebook that the minks are being seen all over that area. The hospital also says people should not approach the minks because they can be aggressive. Nine escaped teenagers are back in custody after they broke out of a detention center in southeastern Pennsylvania Sunday night. The kids empowered two staff members and took their keys at a Braxis Academy, a residential treatment program. State police were called in, but yesterday morning, four turned themselves in because they were cold and tired. The rest were caught soon after that. I know for myself personally, I figured we'd catch these kids because they're probably not as resilient as a 30-some year old, however old he was that knows he's going to jail for the rest of his life. I, I, I don't know if 15 to 17 year olds have the resiliency to want to not have to go back. The trooper is of course talking about the escape killer who was on the run in Pennsylvania for two weeks before his capture.
Control of Pennsylvania's House is again up for grabs today in a special election. This time, it's a race to fill the seat of a Pittsburgh lawmaker whose resignation put the House in a 101 to 101 tie. Today's election has Democrat Lindsey Powell going against Republican Aaron Connolly Ottenrith and will break the tie in the House. But the state government will remain divided with Democrat Josh Shapiro as governor and Republicans holding a Senate majority. A fourth Democrat has joined the race for Pennsylvania Attorney General. Philadelphia state lawmaker Jared Solomon has joined the 2024 election race. Solomon was first elected to the state House of Representatives in 2016. The Democrats have won the last three attorney general elections. Pennsylvania's AG has announced a settlement with a former state college landlord over allegations the company illegally charged student tenants fees attached to security deposits. Under the agreement with Legacy Realty, the company must shut down and pay more than $17,000 to customers who filed complaints as part of a lawsuit. Center County's Board of Commissioners say West Nile virus has been found in a mosquito sample collected by the State Department of Environmental Protection. According to a news release, Center County's Mosquito Disease Control Program is running further surveillance, sampling, and larva control. Officials are urging residents to inspect their yards, reduce clutter, and get rid of any stagnant water. West Nile is the leading cause of mosquito-borne disease in the continental United States. It's most commonly spread to people by the bite of an infected mosquito. Residents are urged to contact their local municipality to help promote cleaning up. A popular bike and pedestrian path in Ferguson Township is now open again after a sinkhole forced a section to close last week. According to the township, the Blue Course Drive shared use path between Bristol Avenue and Birch Court was closed for two days because of the sinkhole. Crews hauled in rocks and filled the hole and the path is now reopened. Just two days after a local tea shop reopened, it faced the threat of possible eviction if it didn't pay thousands in back rent. Reporter Jesse Wynn shows you how the power of a community prevented a business from closing its doors forever. Oh my gosh, am I going to lose my job? When Tidori Tea Shop reopened in State College this month as college students returned to town, the owner and employees were met with a surprising message from the landlord. The shop was $10,000 behind on rent and they might be kicked out. If we didn't raise the um, $10,000 by Friday, he said he would start the eviction process. That news was a shock to employees and customers. It was like my second day on the job and Atlas texted me about that, so I was like kind of really stressed. Like, the shop closed temporarily over the summer while students were away. Now as it reopened for the fall, it faced a fast approaching deadline to catch up on back rent. The shop tried turning to social media for help. We put things out and at first, there was not a lot of people, but then we went overnight and our social media blew up with a bunch of likes. So by the first day, we had $3,000, and then by the second, we had 7000 And it was the plea that the State College community answered. In just three days, the boba shop hit the $10,000 mark, raising just enough money to stay open. Gosh, it felt so relieving. Um, my friend and I, we were both keeping up and making sure that it happened. and. Oh, it felt so nice to, you know, know that Tidori would still be around. Thanks to the love and support of the state college community, Tidori is able to keep its doors open and add new items to their menu, like this crawfle, which is a combination of a croissant and a waffle. In State College, I'm Jesse Wynn for the Center County Report. Tidori is now back to its regular business hours, open seven days a week from 2 p.m. to midnight on East College Avenue. And fall officially begins this week. Will it feel like it? We check the seven-day forecast coming up. Plus, a rodeo comes to Center County for the first time. Also coming up, it's harvest season, and Penn State's Student Farm celebrated it with a special event. We'll take you there. State College Borough's sustainability program is leading the development of a mobility plan that will set the framework for transportation infrastructure and policy improvements within the borough of State College. The Next Generation Connectivity and Mobility Plan will guide the borough and stakeholders through the process of developing a safe and connected multimodal transportation system that enables mobility, health, and well-being for people of all ages. You don't normally think of central Pennsylvania as rodeo country. 
But over the weekend, Center County felt more like Texas. The first annual Happy Valley Rodeo happened Friday and Saturday night at the Grange Fairgrounds in Center Hall. The rodeo featured bull riding, barrel racing, steer wrestling, tie down roping, and team roping. It was hosted by Delta Theta Sigma of Penn State. It's whiteout week at Penn State, and while many people are focused on Saturday's game at Beaver Stadium, the Bryce Jordan Center is preparing for two back-to-back -back concerts. On Thursday, rapper A Boogie with the Hoodie will perform the third stop on his Me vs. Myself college tour with special guests Tusi and Kali at 8 p.m. And on Friday, country singer Thomas Rhett will bring his home team tour with special guests Cole Swindell and Nate Smith at 7.30 p.m. Tickets for both events are available on Ticketmaster. Taking a look above Penn State campus, taking a look above the Hub Robinson Center. As you can see, we have some clouds around, but overall we're going to be looking pretty dry today. And the sun is out, which is pretty nice. 64 degrees right now here in State College with light breeze out from the west northwest at 13 miles an hour. Overall, we're looking pretty good right now, and we're going to be staying looking good out there as we go throughout the day and into this week. But first, let's take a look at our local temperatures here in the State College area. We're generally in the 60s here in the State College area with slightly warmer temperatures to our south and east, which is expected. And as we zoom out across the Commonwealth, we're seeing a similar story with te generally temperatures in the 60s, slightly warmer temperatures to our south and east, places like Philadelphia, places like Harrisburg are seeing those warmer temperatures. This is a pretty uh, typical fall-like day for this time of year. Right now, temperatures generally in the 60s and 70s across the state. Now taking a look at our local radar, we have some clouds around, but in terms of precipitation right now, not really. And across the country, we're looking pretty okay in most areas. I mean, we have some rain up to our northeast up there in Quebec, but overall we're looking pretty okay. And we're gonna be looking at a very nice week. So let's take a look at that as we go into the future cast. Going into this evening, we're going to be seeing, like, again, some clouds around an area. We might be partly cloudy overnight tonight, but we're not looking at anything in the way of precipitation. Going into tomorrow morning, we're a similar story. We're going to be even, I would say that tomorrow is even going to be a nicer day today with less clouds around across the state. As we go into Wednesday and into Thursday, we're going to be staying dry and we're going to be staying mostly clear skies around the Commonwealth. And as you can see, as we go throughout the day on Thursday, pretty much the same story. Now, we are taking a look at a coastal system that's going to be making its way up the coast as we go throughout the week. As you can see by Friday, it's sitting around the North Carolina, Virginia area, and this is going to be making its way up the coast as we go into the weekend. You can see a lot of rain. A lot of rain is going to be hitting areas like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, that whole area. Now, is it going to impact us here in State College? There is a possibility. I would say this weekend we're most likely going to be seeing clouds around, but in the way of rain, I would say it's kind of unlikely. I don't really predict that we're going to be seeing any significant rain from this system going into the weekend, but it is something to keep an eye on, and there is the whiteout football game this Saturday, so it is something to keep an eye on. It definitely will be cloudy for that game, but in the way of rain, we're just going to have to wait and see. And you see that system is going to move out of here for the most part going into Sunday and into beginning of next week. But for today here in State College, 72 degrees with mostly sunny conditions. Going into tonight, we're going to drop down to the 40s with partly cloudy skies. And then tomorrow is going to be an even nicer day than today with slightly warmer temperatures, more sunshine, a high of 74 for tomorrow. Taking a look at our seven day forecast, we're going to be mainly in the 70s this week with a lot of sunny skies as we go throughout the week. As we go into the weekend, however, those clouds are going to build. We're going to be slightly cooler on Saturday with a chance of rain late as we go into the whiteout football game. But overall, I'm predicting mainly clouds this weekend and temperatures will be generally in the 60s. So it's going to be feeling pretty fall like. Jeremy, you know this is my favorite time. It's like sweatshirt and shorts weather, right? Yeah. It's the best time. And some people also like to call it maybe football weather. So Mac, coming up with sports. Coming up next in sports, a local community bands together after the tragic death of one of its high school football players. Also coming up, Penn State football played its first road game of the season on Saturday. See how the Nittany Lions did as they now head into Whiteout Week. I'm Mac Young with sports. The Jersey Shore High School football team took the field last night for an emotional game, just three days after one of its players passed away. The big crowds are now for the game with many people sporting Max Angles number four. The game had been postponed on Friday after the 17-year-old died. He collapsed on the field during a game more than a week ago. 
Engel's family said Max was a warrior on the football field and fought hard to earn a place amongst his brothers in Orange. Many schools around the area showed their support this past Friday at games before the news of his death broke, showing off orange t-shirts and ribbons in support of Engel. His team won big last night by a score of 61-12. to now Penn State football goes into this week's whiteout game still unbeaten at 3-0. The Nittany Lions traveled to Illinois Saturday for their first Big Ten matchup of the season. Tim Rogers has more on the game. The Nittany Lions defense has been a huge focal point for their success this season. That showed on Saturday as linebacker Abdul Carter intercepted finding a line eye quarterback, Lute Altmeyer, leading to a field goal to give Penn State a 6-0 lead. That was the start of many takeaways for the Nittany Lions. On the next possession, Daquan Hardy added an interception of his own, which running back Catron Allen capitalized on with a four-yard score. Penn State gave up a touchdown right before the end of the half, but got the ball right back with a Johnny Dixon interception. The Nittany Lions used some trickery to find the end zone as running back Trey Potts threw an 11-yard touchdown pass to tight end Tyler Warren to extend Penn State's lead to 23-7. And just when you thought the turnovers would stop for Illinois, Cam Miller got the Nittany Lions' fourth interception of the game and fifth forced turnover by the defense. Penn State went on to win 30-13 and improved to 3-0 on the season. Penn State will play here on Saturday for the annual whiteout game in hopes to continue their winning ways. I'm Tim Rogers for the Senate County Report. This Saturday's game against Iowa kicks off at 7.30 p.m. You can listen live on Penn State Com Radio. In Big Ten news, Michigan State has told suspended football coach Mel Tucker it plans to fire him for cause. The university suspended him this month during an investigation into sexual harassment allegations by Brenda Tracy. She's a rape survivor and activist against sexual violence. Tucker denies the allegations. Now to high school football. State College High is prepared to take on Central Dolphin away from home this week, but on Friday the Little Lions battled their fellow felines from the West in a catfight as they took on Altoona at Memorial Field. It's a clash between two of the largest schools in our area and a storied rivalry when the Altoona Mountain Lions visited the State High Little Lions. And let's pick things up here in the second quarter where Altoona quarterback Brennan Freewald hits Julian Hazelwood who runs into the end zone for a 23-yard score. Just about two minutes later, it will be State College's Eddie Corkery who's going to connect here with Michael Gall on a fade route for a Little Lions touchdown, tying the game up at 7 apiece. With five minutes left in the first half, we're going to see State College go in the Wildcat. Running back Deontay Sheffy takes the snap and plunges into the end zone to give State College the 14-7 lead. Later on in this first half, Corky's going to throw to a wide open Dimir Code who was tackled just short of the goal line at the one. State College would score two plays later. End of the first half, now Corkery is going to connect once again to Code, who's going to break free right here, making his way down the sideline, who's going to come in for a 51-yard touchdown. State College steamrolled the Mountain Lions, getting a 49-7 win. And remember, you can catch highlights and post-game comments from local high school football games on our sports show, After the Whistle, Fridays, on our YouTube channel at 11.30 p.m. Checking in on the NFL now after starting the season with a loss to the San Francisco 49ers, the Pittsburgh Steelers stayed home for week two and hosted the Cleveland Browns for some Monday Night Football. Some ownership the Steelers got off to a slow start but found their groove as their defense was the key factor in the outcome of this matchup. For Browns running back Nick Chubb, he was carted off early after suffering a serious knee injury on a rush in the red zone. His short-lived season ended just two plays into the second quarter. The Steelers' T.J. Wine and Alex Highsmith combined for a scoop and score in the fourth quarter to put the game-winning touchdown on the board as Pittsburgh would walk away with a 26-22 win against Cleveland. Cleveland. The still unbeaten Penn State women's soccer team will take the field on the road at Rutgers on Thursday. At their last game, they took time to honor the seniors. The Nittany Lions are coming off a 4-0 win on Friday at home against Maryland. Before kickoff, the team honored seven seniors, Two defenders, Kate Wiesner and Ellie Wheeler, found the back of the net on their special day. Penn State is now 7-0-1 on the season, and the team is riding a seven-game winning streak. That's all for sports. Now back to you, Angelica and Tim, at the desk. Thanks, Mac. What a great run by you. And you can't forget about the whiteout game coming up. But coming up next now, celebrating this year's harvest at a farm run by Penn State students, we'll take you to the annual festival after the break. Fall officially begins this Saturday, but it's already feeling like fall around Center County. 
Penn State's Student Farm hosted its annual Harvest Festival, and the public was invited to join and learn about the farm. Reporter Paige McCarrick was there. The Harvest Festival at Penn State Student Farm is an annual tradition to celebrate the end of the season and usher in autumn in Happy Valley. The event brought together students, organizations, and the public. Back at home, we had harvest festivals, and like it was very like you know everyone came out, everyone came out to support this cause and the community. So I came out to do that as well. As this is the eighth annual harvest festival hosted by the Student Farm, organizer Katie Seidel says it has significantly expanded throughout the years. So the Student Farm actually opened in like 2016 and we started as a one acre farm so now we're four acres so we're much bigger so we can have so many more like stations and partnerships. The event showcased not only food, music and crafts but also learning and thinking about sustainable agriculture and food. Much of what's grown at the farm goes to Penn State dining halls and even to the Lion Pantry to help fight food insecurity among students. In State College, I'm Paige McCarrick for the Center County Report. And that's all for today's newscast. We hope you'll join us in Friday for our next local news update. But you can follow us anytime for breaking news on our Center County Report Twitter, and you can see our stories on Facebook, Instagram, and our website. Have a good afternoon.